On Thursday night, the politics in this nation changed dramatically. The coalition is now back in the game. I'll go through all of that in a second, but first I just want to show you this clip from one of the top anchors at CNN, the American network every bit as biased and as left as our ABC, about a surprise guest that they'd had on their network during the week. Many of you have expressed deep anger and disappointment. Many of you are upset that someone who attempted to destroy our democracy was invited to sit on a stage in front of a crowd of Republican voters to answer questions and predictably continued to spew lie after lie after lie. And I get it. It was disturbing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> who is this dreadful person? Yes, of course, you guessed it. Donald Trump. But what was it that upset all the lovies so much? Was it, I don't know, this about abortion law? Again, you talk about radicalism. People that will kill a baby in the ninth month or the eighth month or the seventh month or after the baby is born, they're the radicals, not the pro I just want to give you... Or was it this when Donald Trump promised to end the war in Ukraine? If I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day, 24 hours. How would you settle that war in one day? Because I'll meet with Putin, I'll meet with Zelensky. They both have weaknesses and they both have strengths. And within 24 hours, that war will be settled. It'll be over. It'll be absolutely over. Do you over. want Ukraine to win this war? Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people. Or was it this when Donald Trump warned about America's phenomenal debt? Because we're spending money like drunken sailors. So you know just to be clear, Mr. President, you think the U.S. should default if the White House does not agree to the spending cuts Republicans well, are demanding? Well, you might as well do it now because you'll do it later. And there was plenty more of that. No wonder the lovies lost it. And speaking of the lovies losing it, this week marked a turning point in our own federal politics. On Thursday night, I was privileged to be, along with Rita, <clears throat> In the room when Peter Dutton kicked open the door to the Lodge and Kirribilli House in 2025. The atmosphere was electric. Peter Dutton's budget in reply speech, which was superb, coming hard on the heels of his critical announcement only a couple of weeks ago that the coalition will vote no to the race referendum on The Voice. Well, it's opened the way for a proper conservative coalition government to return to power in two years' time or even sooner if Labor panics and calls an early election. Dutton's mannerisms, mannerism was calm but determined, measured but powerful. More importantly, his message was the most authentically conservative message since Tony Abbott. Finally, first up, he took the fight directly to Labor, and the only thing in the Jim Chalmers budget this week that people actually applauded was the surplus. Watch the Labor front bench smirking awkwardly because they know the truth. The surplus was not theirs. It was the coalition that laid the groundwork, but it was the mining industry and the likes of Gina Reinhart who are entirely responsible for that surplus. Now, the government's benefited from the last nine years of coalition strong economic management. Yeah. The books they inherited had the lowest unemployment rate in almost 50 years. Yeah. We created almost two million jobs over nine years. Yeah. And we bequeathed interest rates at historic lows. Yeah. Now, of course, Labor has also benefited from company tax receipts and the revenue generated from soaring coal, gas and other mining commodities coal, gas and other mining commodities, which they now intend to destroy. <laughs> nice work, Chalmers. But how will Labor spend this fossil fuels windfall? Not on sound economic management, oh no, but on nonsensical climate garbage such as green hydrogen or, hey, let's become a renewable superpower. Can anyone please name one renewable superpower anywhere on the planet? No, of course not. Like green hydrogen, it's a fantasy. At best, Labor are peddling snake oil. At worst, they are knowingly lying, like they did about your energy bills. We live in the best country in the world, but at the moment, millions of Australians are hurting and have been forgotten by this government. They're feeling the pain of the cost of living crisis, as well as the government's energy policy crisis, which is just driving electricity and gas bills higher and higher day by day. In this budget, despite the government's energy policies, 
your electricity bill, as I say, is still going up by more than $500. Yet you were promised on 97 occasions by the Prime Minister of this country that that bill would go down by $275 per year. Now, I'd love to see a copy of anyone's power bill that's gone down by $275 since Mr Albanese made that promise. Bowen and Albo, they lied. Worse, as Peter Dutton point out, pointed out, the deception does not stop with your power bills. Labor have lied about inflation too, pretending it's all the fault of overseas wars. When you hear the government constantly blaming Putin's invasion for inflation, they're being deceptive. Australia's inflation woes are of Labor's own making. Inflation is coming from Canberra. And Labor's big spending budget will only fuel inflation and make life harder for millions of Australians. Inflation is coming from Canberra. That was the killer line, and you bet Labor knows it. Nowhere in his speech did Peter Dutton refer to any individuals within, within Labor. He simply talked about the policies with one very clear exception. In a sign that will not have been missed by many on the Labor front bench, Peter Dutton singled out the climate change minister, Chris Bowen, the man responsible for that idiotic, we'll cut your power bills by $275, <laughs> broken promise. Watch as Bowen smirks and jokes about being named, but you can bet your bottom dollar, if you've still got one, that Dutton's comments will be the result of Liberal Party polling showing just how on the nose and how unpopular Chris Bowen and his mad climate crusade really are. Minister Bowen, as we know, was the worst performer in multiple portfolios during the Rudd and Gillard government. As Energy Minister today, his policies are driving your electricity and your gas prices higher and higher. On the 1st of July, power prices are set to rise by up to 33 per cent for almost 250,000 small businesses and 1.6 million households. If you think you're paying a lot now, you are only going to pay more under Labor and they clearly have us on the wrong energy path. Indeed they do, the wrong energy path. But let's also not forget Chris Bowen was a darling of Australia's worst ever, in my opinion, Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Dutton certainly hasn't forgotten. Now, if companies shut up shop on our shores and go elsewhere because of Labor's energy crisis, we lose the jobs. We lose the economic benefit to our nation. We lose industries and there's no benefit to the environment because those emissions, greater emissions, are just emitted in another part of the world. In that scenario, no one wins. So Labor is being deceptive with its energy policy. The scientific reality is that we must firm up the energy grid when renewable energy is unreliable. The latest battery technology installed in Adelaide at a cost of $180 million lasts for one hour. More than $100 billion will need to be spent on 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines. Remember how successful the Labor Party was at Pink Bats? Exactly. It's just Pink Bats all over again. So if renewables are a joke, which they are, what is the answer? Next generation small modular nuclear technologies are safe, reliable, cost effective, can be plugged into existing grids where we've turned off coal and emit zero emissions. In the 21st century, any sensible government must at least consider small modular nuclear as part of the energy mix. The submarines can tie up at docks in our capital cities with the nuclear technology and the nuclear propulsion systems, but you can't, under Labor's policy, have any consideration of powering that city with zero emissions using the same technology. And then came the warnings about how Labor will always come after your money, one way or another. The key indicator that a government can't manage money is that it comes after yours. On the eve of Easter, Labor axed the former coalition's low and middle income tax offset. The tax paid by Australians will increase by more than $300 billion. In this budget, Labor has slugged our farmers with a new $153 million tax. Now, to those who have welcomed this tax, a word of caution. Being spared by the Labor tax shark today doesn't mean you won't be on its menu tomorrow. What a great line. Being spared by the Labor tax shark today 
doesn't mean you won't be on its menu tomorrow. Peter Dutton's budget and reply is the beginning of the fight back to the lodge in 2025. Can it be done? Well, ever since first the Nationals and then the Liberals took the decision to say no to the voice, Peter Dutton has found his own voice and is sounding like a genuine Conservative leader, calm and measured, but with steel in the soul. The Liberals have embraced nuclear, that's clear. They are opposed to the voice. They recognise the economic dangers of net zero. My advice? Go the whole hog and announce that net zero was a mistake. It must be abandoned because we simply cannot afford it. Forget that it's completely pointless anyway. Outsiders fans will remember that I was telling the Libs all the way back in 2020 to go nuclear in order to wedge Labor on net zero. It looks like that is exactly what Peter Dutton is doing now. A little bit late, but it's happening. That's the key point. It will be a hard slog for Dutton to boot Albo and his socialist spendthrift climate loonies out of power <laughs> as they bankrupt us into renewables oblivion. But for the good of the nation, it must be done. And after Peter Dutton's performance this week, I believe it can and it will be done. Go hard on the madness of Bowen and his energy lunacy. Go hard on the racism of The Voice. Go hard on the insane immigration numbers. And go hard on, well, let's not spoil the surprise. I can't wait to see Dutton in the lodge, mainly because the lovies will completely lose it. <laughs> and at his swearing in, who knows, we might even get our own Aussie version of this young lady.